Hi everyone, Therese here. Welcome to this week's Karma Cards. So I want to tell you about the energy that's coming up inside this week. Today is October 19th, so by the time you see this recording, this energy will still be on the way. And what I wanted to share with you is a very amazing moment that's coming up in astrology with the planet Venus and the Sun. Now it's called a Venus Kazimi, also known as a Venus Star Point. And what's happening is both the Sun and Venus are going to be meeting up at 29 degrees in the sign of Libra. Now, why this is special is that Venus hasn't met up with the Sun in the sign of Libra in over 250 years. Now Venus rules Libra, so this makes it extra magical and intense. And not only that, it's happening on October 22nd, 2022. And with the, the 29 degrees, if you reduce it to its base number, it's an 11. So we have two master numbers activated. 22, which is the architect of peace, and 11, which is the intuitive master, both coming together in the sign of Venus, meeting with the sun. This is a very beautiful energy day. So the themes of the day are about love and harmony and peace and working together and things coming into balance. It's such a delightful energy and it's the first time it's happened within our lifetime. And right behind that on October 25th is a new moon in Scorpio with a partial solar eclipse. So we have a big energy followed by another big energy coming in. So when we're dealing with a solar eclipse, this happens to be another sign of a new beginning. And remember, eclipse season has an effect for six months. So something really new is going to come in with this new moon in Scorpio, and it's heralding a more positive change in some direction in your life. So when we're looking at Scorpio itself, the sign that it's coming into, we know it has to do with it has to do with transformation. So there is a positive transformative energy coming in right behind this very beautiful um, Venus star point. And why it's called a star point is because of the way that Venus travels. Venus makes a Venus pentagram. It makes a five pointed star the way it travels through the zodiac in the signs. And it's pretty amazing. It's actually something that I'd like to learn more about. I wish I had more information to give you. But if you look up Venus star pattern or Venus star point, you will find more information about the Venus star point there. So basically, in a nutshell, it's the way Venus moves through the sky. Every eight years, it makes this perfect five-pointed star in the sky. Um, and it's such a cool phenomenon and there are people who have done deep research on it. So I, I highly suggest you check it out. And if you want to really get the most out of this cosmic energy that's coming through, I really encourage you to join the new moon spirit circle happening on October 25th, where I can take you deeper into the cosmic messages, what the universe is pointing us, the direction it's pointing us in, and how to focus and utilize that energy so you can make the most of it in your life and the most of it with your manifesting. And of course, there's always psychic Q&A afterwards where you get to ask me a personal question about your life and I can give you some psychic information around that topic. If you're interested in this, please go to this link below. I will also post it inside the description so you can just click on it and come join us for the next Spirit Circle. So this week's message from the team is about the importance of using your creative energy. So we are creator beings and everything you do is creative energy, but without intention or focus of that creative energy, it can stagnate and become destructive in your life. So the message is really about be intentional with what you're creating. You're creating all the time. Now that might feel like a big task, but this is why having something to focus on, a goal or intention is so important in your life. It's I remember when I first started connecting with my team, they were like the number one thing to learn 
is intention. Intention is what helps you start creating the life you desire. So I want you to just check in with yourself right now and touch base and ask yourself, what is it I'm intending to create with my life right now? If you're utilizing your focus and creativity, you probably came up with an intention pretty easy. It was probably right there at the forefront. This is why I find goals to be so incredibly important and why I do something like the Epic Year Workshop each year, whereas a, which is about intentional goal setting and aligning to your vibr a vibratory set point, where you're at vibrationally within the cosmos at this time. And I go deep into that in that workshop. But regardless of how you do it, have a goal, something you're working towards so that you are able to direct your creative energy, your creative force towards something. Because when we're not doing that, it becomes stagnant and destructive. And a good way to see that is when we're not focused at something that we desire to create, this energy has to go somewhere. So if it's not being utilized in a conscious, mindful, and intentional way, then it ends up being utilized by our ego. <laughs> it's going to go somewhere. That's why it's... it's um, it's not quite a use it or lose it situation. It's a use it or it gets used by another part of you, a more unconscious part of yourself will use it. So what does that look like? My cat is very concerned about you using your energy properly. <laughs> so what does it look like when our ego utilizes our creative life force? It means that we are focusing and magnetizing in our problems. We're using our creative energy to fuel our worry or our doubt or our fear rather than using it to direct it towards a destination point we want to go to. I think I talked about this in the last karma cards or the one before, but you need a, a destination point. You need to pick a point on the map that is intention, right? And it's it instantly gives you a direction to move in. You know the path. It starts to appear for you. Well, if you're not picking a point on that map, then this energy starts to come apart. It it doesn't have a narrowed and focused direction. Instead, it starts to sort of particleize and break apart. And this is where it gets grabbed by kind of anything that we're focused on. So if we're focused on something we don't want, then this energy can be used to sort of magnetize and magnify that energy. So whatever we're afraid of or whatever we're worried about or whatever we don't want, it's blowing up. It's getting more energy from us and it becomes a destructive force in our life. Now, if we're conscious of it, we will see that we were the creator of that energy in our own lives. But many times if we're not conscious of how we're focusing our energy, then we're not conscious of why it showed up. And we either go down the path of victimhood where somebody or something did this to us, or we end up going down the path of having to sort of do cleanup work. And this is where healing work really comes in. And we end up kind of having to sit in a certain area until we've resolved or cleaned up or neutralized that energy. So again, Understand that your creative force is constantly at work. Now, this doesn't mean you constantly. It's not like you have to have hypervigilance and constantly be focused on what is my intention. But asking yourself that before you start something is very helpful. I mean, it, it it's always advised that before you sit down and approach something, think about why am I doing this, right? Because not only does that give you intention, but it heightens your focus. If you understand why am I sitting down to do this, it makes you naturally better at whatever it is you're trying to accomplish. If we're just trying to check things off to get things done in a day, we might be able to do it. We might be able to check it off and get it done, but we might not be able to do it in a very effective way. We might be kind of sloppy about it. And that was sort of the other message the other message was sort of about like this, that the, without this focus, that there is this ungrounded um, energy, instead of having grace in your life, it becomes very clumsy or mistake ridden. And again, this because 
focus, intention, right? That grounds you. It's a, one of the ways we can ground ourselves is through clarity of vision and our intention. And when we're not holding that, we don't know why we're doing something other than we just need to be doing something. This is where we tend to make more mistakes in our life. And on a completely separate note, just a fun fact I learned this week, which really encouraged me to make sure I'm drinking enough water. I learned, <laughs> I was watching uh, another YouTuber actually, and now I cannot remember her channel's name, but I will look it up and I will type it right here so you can see who I was watching. But she was talking about um, the effects of dehydration on the body. And what was really shocking was that even mild dehydration in the body can shrink the brain. Your brain shrinks when you don't drink enough water, which also leads to more mistakes. And they actually did studies on it. In fact, you know what? I'll find that video I watched. I will link it in the description below so you can also watch because there's even more to it than that. But I'm telling you when I thought about that, how mild dehydration can increase the number of mistakes that we make simply because our brain is shrinking a little bit, it really compels you to wanna to make sure you stay good and hydrated. So I'll link that below. And it, even though it's a completely different subject and then kind of told to you in a completely different way, I just wanna point out that that is one of the ways that we can become ungrounded, right? When we're not fully taking care of the body or giving the body what it needs to work at its most optimal levels. And many times we don't realize that we're doing that. So that brings us back to mindfulness about the fact that this energy is constantly working whether we're focused on it or not. So spend some time every day really thinking about, wait, why am I doing this? That's a great question to ask yourself, to give yourself intention and focus. And if you really don't know why, you're doing something, then ask yourself, then do I have to do it? Because many times we, one of the tactics we can use to avoid going deeper or sitting with ourselves is keeping ourselves busy. So it's a good time to spend time focusing in, connecting in with your own intention and harnessing that beautiful creative power that's always working in your life for your highest good. And with that, Let's do some karma cards. So if you're new to karma cards, let me quickly show you how these work. I have three decks here, planets, signs of the zodiac, and the houses of astrology. And I've already asked my team, what is the message you have for us this week? And I've got two sets of answers, a set in red, which are action related, and a set in blue, which are outcome related. And the way that you play is you feel in with that beautiful intuition of yours and decide what do you need to hear this week? Are you looking for action related guidance or are you looking to see how things resolve over the next seven days? And of course, you can always choose both. And while you're choosing, let me tell you the timing for this reading. This reading is for October 19th through October 26th and the flavor of this reading. Now this one's really cool. We've got Venus, who I talked about earlier, having this very special moment. Well, she showed up in the deck and she showed up in the sign of Libra, which is where Venus is placed right now and where she will be having her star point moment. And we've got the sixth house activated. Now this is the house of how we are in service to others as well as our own health spiritual action is to cherish relationships as a full-time job. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is one where we know this and yet it's a, it's easy to let other things get in the way. But I often remind myself that the only thing that I will get to take with me from this physical experience to the beyond are the relationships I've formed. That's the only thing we get to take with us. So when you really think about it, it's the most precious thing that you have here on this planet are the people in your life and how you're connected to them. So we're being asked to really put the emphasis and focus on the people in our life and 
nurturing and loving and cherishing those relationships that we have now. Mental action. Enjoy the beauty of serving. I love that. That one's pretty straightforward. The beauty of serving. When we can be of service, it means that we have the opportunity, that something is in front of us, that we actually have abundance if we're able to serve. It means we have something to give. And just by acknowledging we have something to give, it means we have it. So if we have love to give, for example, it means we feel filled with love. If we have compassion to give, we're filled with compassion. If we have uh, financial contributions to give, that means we're abundant financially. If we have patience to give, it means we're filled with patience. So you can see that whenever you have the opportunity to serve, it's an acknowledgement of how abundant you are. Isn't that beautiful? And if you want to feel your abundance, reach into yourself and see where can I give from? Even if it's time, if you have the time to give to someone, you're abundant with time, right? And when we start looking at our life that way, we can see how incredibly rich in so many ways we already are. Physical action at this time. Charm, art, and beauty are the way to do it with your partner and do it a little bit at a time. Um, and again here, this is very Venetian in its approach, but it's like enjoy the beauty in your life, right? Enjoy it with those around you. And it doesn't have to be something extravagant. It's like going for a walk in the woods or sitting and holding someone, right? These are the ways expressing, um, creating a beautiful meal for someone as another way of it. It's just what little ways can you acknowledge all the beauty of life and share that with others. All right, so now let's go into outcomes for Venus in Libra in the sixth house of service and health. The spiritual outcome at this time is the attraction of cooperation to perfect service to others. So what I love about these influences is even though we're hearing the messages and we're taking it in and they're like, okay, this is what I'm gonna work on. This is a major influence that's affecting all of us. So there is a natural leaning towards cooperation, towards wanting to harmonize and work together. And especially at this time, just when we're in this point in time, it's extra emphasized because that's where the sun is sitting in Libra. And we've got Venus in Libra right now. So there's extra emphasis on it. And it's a good time to take advantage of it. Notice that um, people want to cooperate with you. And if you come into anything with the mindset that others want to work with you, you're going to be sending out an energy that's very workable and very agreeable that people do. They're just going to want to work with you. They're going to want to cooperate. Our mindset about how we approach anything with another person is very powerful and can actually precede what happens. So if we're walking into a situation bracing and expecting it to be unpleasant, you know you're helping manifest that version. So they're saying focus on the cooperation aspect that, that people do want to work with you, that people want to harmonize. And when you show up with that, you might be the catalyst for that happening. Um, but what you're going to notice is that people are very agreeable to that and that's where they are coming from too and it's just going to be um, a more pleasant experience for the whole mental outcome at this time pleasure from the decisions about what is good for us which is really interesting because what is good for us we don't always <laughs> have pleasure around it so this is a beautiful time to know like oh, I was just talking about drinking more water that's good for you and maybe that information will spark you to be like, oh gosh, yeah, I love it. Now that I'm thinking about it as I hydrate, I feel so much clarity and I feel so much better and that feels good, right? So we're going to be feeling really good at this time around what is actually good for us. So the pleasure is indulging in what helps us feel healthy, healed, and whole rather than what is indulgent. In fact, it's almost like, we're feeling indulgent by taking care of ourselves. So I'm just saying, utilize, like be in that energy. Let it, <laughs> let it flow through you. Let it ride and enjoy this moment where it feels really good 
and it is really good for you. Physical outcome at this time, good times resulting from the fairness shown by your work. So again, whatever you're putting out there, that's your work. Whatever you're doing for others, whatever you're investing your energy into is your work. And as you come to it, if you're dealing with other people and it's really good to think about how people are going to work with you. Visualize that. Put that into the work you do. Imagine people wanting to respond in a harmonious and cooperative way around the work that you're going to do. And you're going to feel that energy. And that's the energy that's going to precede your work as it presents in some way to the world. Whether it's to one person or to many. It's going to proceed with this harmonious, good feeling, um, good natured energy. And as a result of that, you're just going to feel really good about it. So this is a moment where we get to feel really good about the energy we're creating. And again, if we listen to the advice from the team, the more conscious we are, the more intentional we are about what we're creating. So for example, I create harmony. People want to work with me and I want to work with them. We work together well. If I send that intention out, then I'm going to definitely feel that. It's going to, <laughs> what's good for me is going to feel good not only to me, but to other people as well. And so that's the big message for this week. I hope you enjoy it and have a beautiful week. And I will see you at the next Karma Cards. Thank you for watching. Subscribe now and hit the notification bell so that you know the next time I release a new video. Until then, stay magical.